The key to physicist Carl Leo's passion can be found on the roof of his institute. Here, the Hector Fellow is working on the conversion of sunlight into electrical energy by means of a new generation of photovoltaics. Humans are visual animals. When we see the sun and see the effect when the sun shines on a solar cell and a machine starts moving, that's fascinating. No sound, no motion of materials. The same is true for displays. When I look at a monitor and examine a picture, then for me as a being who registers everything with his eyes, that's a particularly beautiful subject area. Leo's most outstanding achievement are photovoltaic modules with completely new properties. These organic solar cells work without silicon, and they have the potential to change our world. To date, solar cells have always been fixed to metal plates. They're relatively heavy and inflexible. Our organic photovoltaics are not as efficient as their silicon counterparts, but we're working on that. Our new cells are much lighter. They are integrated into a plastic foil that can be spread anywhere, even on roofs that don't tolerate heavy loads. These sheets can be transparent, and so may even be used on windows, and the cost of their production is low. Optimizing these new flexible solar cells is the goal of Carl Leo and and his team at Dresden's Technical University. Franz Seltzer is part of this team and sponsored by the Hector Fellow Academy. His specialty is the properties of organic semiconductors. The raw materials for his research are various carbon-based dyes. These are organic chemical compounds, hence the term organic photovoltaics for the team's invention. Pretty much all that surrounds us is organic. We too are organic, made up of small molecules. Food is also organic, as well as dyes. Among these dyes are some we encounter every day, like the blue on our motorway signs. It's called zinc thalocyanine and is one of the compounds we use in our organic solar cells. To make use of these compounds' properties, they're applied to various carrier materials, in this case, glass. After a number of further treatments, the dyes are ready to show their full potential as the basis for organic solar cells or organic diodes, like OLEDs. They are another research subject for Leo's team. While organic solar cells turn sunlight into power, OLEDs emit light. The scientists from Dresden can create various colors depending on the organic compounds. Just like the novel solar cells, organic diodes also open up new areas of application, such as environmentally friendly lighting and display technologies. The main difference is we don't use high purity crystals, which are expensive and can only cover small areas. Instead, we apply an extremely thin film to a very large area on nearly any substrate – plastic, sheets, newspaper, even skin. This makes the electronics much more adaptable. They can be rolled up, even composted. Such electronics lend themselves to all kinds of applications that cannot be realized using classical crystalline technology. Another Hector Fellow Academy project shows the enormous potential for the use of organic semiconductors in medicine. At Tübingen's University Clinical Center, Hector Fellow Eberhard Zrenner is breaking new ground. His research is supported by Carl Leo's team in Dresden. 
Eberhard Srenner's long-term objective is to make blind people see again. The technological cornerstone for this feat is a small retina chip that registers light rays entering the eye and transforms them into electrical signals that are sent to the brain. Already, this enables blind patients suffering from retinitis pigmentosa to perceive not only light and dark and the outlines of objects, but sometimes also letters and facial expressions, a milestone in ophthalmology. Eberhard Srenner and his colleague Wadod Haag want to take it even further. To date, the chip's images have been rather rough and are not always stable. Replacing even small parts of deteriorated retinal function is a gigantic endeavor. The HFA colleagues from Dresden provide much needed support because their light processing organic diodes may enable the next big breakthrough. Technology and medicine working in concert to improve patients' lives. It's a difficult problem, and there are perhaps a thousand solutions, but one of these solutions is the best. It takes a lot of intuition and dedication to find the right materials to structure the compounds and thus enhance signal transmission. That's what I admire about Leo and his team, this practical approach. They make new toys that we can physically test to see how far these new materials may take us. This is an entirely new world for us. Medicine is not part of our routine work, but because there is so much potential, we're more than happy to help. For a scientist, it's always good to broaden one's perspective by talking to people from other fields. The physicists in Dresden are developing minute electrodes that can transmit electricity to the receptor cells in the watery environment of the eye. The electrodes are coated with organic dyes that are capable of transmitting energy in a novel way, with very low resistance and in small local doses. In this case, the dye is not sprayed on, but applied by electrolysis. Time-lapse photography shows how the coating settles on the tip of the electrode. We have to eliminate any adverse interactions between the electrodes and the human body, and the components need to be flexible. When the eye moves, the material must move with it. Also, the compounds need to be biocompatible. We don't want to harm the patient's eye by introducing toxic substances. And the components themselves have to withstand the environment inside the human body. Creating an interface between human sensory cells and high-tech modules made in Dresden is Wadod Hack's specialty. Here in the lab in Tübingen, the electrodes made by Leo and his colleagues are put to the test. How does the living retinal tissue of a mouse react to signals from the electrodes? Under the microscope, Haag sees how the stimulated cells are firing and light up. The first signs of success. It's a recipe we continually try to improve. They make the electrodes, we test them, we give feedback, and eventually we hope that together we can find electrodes that can be integrated into the chip that will achieve much higher resolution and better performance for the patient. Interdisciplinary research at its best, supported by the Hector Fellow Academy. Many problems relating to the retina chip have yet to be solved. But by developing organic diodes, the team from Dresden have proved that an ingenious idea can eventually become an extremely useful novel product.
The organic diodes are already on the market. Even their co-inventors, including Carl Leo, use them every day in the screens of their mobile phones. An indication that we can also look forward to soon hearing more about the retina chip and organic photovoltaics. When someone asks me what I do for a living, I simply pull out my cell phone and say, that's what I do, displays for mobile phones. But in 10 years' time, I want to point to the nearest building and say, see the stuff on the face of that building there? Well, I made that. A bold prediction, but one that is likely to come true. The flexible solar panels created by Carl Leo and his team are ingenious and extremely useful tools in the fight against climate change. Carl Leo, a visionary who aims to put new inventions to general use.